Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. Got some very important uh, things to share with you on things that are going on around the world. Uh, everything from our border, Ukraine, Russia, possible peace. Will it be? Who knows? Ukraine may be joining NATO very soon. Uh, it's a mess in the world. And uh, maybe this week, too, I'll try to tackle this some from a biblical aspect. Uh, but first off, before I get started there, let me just share with you. Five hours ago, we uploaded this video here, Firmament, What Is It Really? And it is a hypothesis, but then again, there is a lot of speculation about the earth, whether it's flat, whether it's round, whether it's hollow, etc. All these different ideas worthy of research and exploration. And I got into the subject not because of flat earth or whether or not the earth is hollow or not, but because Genesis chapter 1 does seem to be a little bit odd when it comes to the creation of light, much like that of Romans chapter 7. When I did the, vid uh, the video just recently on the teaching on Romans chapter 7, this time I wanted to tackle the issue in Genesis chapter 1, uh, firmament being one of those issues, and of course the light being created, created on the first day as well as the fourth day. What does that really mean? These are questions that really make you scratch your head and as I got into it, I really uncovered a lot more than what I had anticipated. So I hope it's a blessing to you and I uh, hope you'll enjoy it. The link is in the description below for Patreon forward slash Israeli News Live. So check it out. Let's get right into the news, though, the things that are going on. Um, one thing I do want to share right here at the beginning here. This is uh, John Kennedy, excuse me, not John Kennedy, but Robert uh, Kennedy Jr. speaking about the situation in Ukraine, and I'd like for you to hear what he actually says here on Fox News. This is an eye-opener in itself. Listen up. And by the way, oh, we're... Well, we better get some volume there because Robert, he does have the issue with his voice there, and uh, I wish somebody would let him know um, and you know what we're going to need? We're going to need that audio. Hang on one second. To, and by the way, what we're doing in Ukraine is not good for the Ukrainian people. We have killed 300,000 Ukrainian troops, 14,000 civilians. Well, Europe, Europe has a step up. Geopolitical machination. To there you go right there. 300,000. And Robert puts it right where its blame belongs, and that is the United States. Because Ukraine would not be in this war if it wasn't for the Biden administration pushing that war. Um, at any rate there, let's continue on here. Updates, Ukraine says Russia to move staff from the nuclear uh, power plant there in Russia. That is a very alarming uh, news brief right here. And the reason why I say it's alarming is because uh, as I, if you recall, one of the intel pieces I'd got a little while back was that if Russia began to withdraw from the nuclear power facility, that could be that they're getting ready to let this thing melt down and create a no man's land. Because if Russia feels like they're not going to win the war, uh, that could be exactly what their next strategic move would be. Now, that, if you remember yesterday, we reported, or either yesterday or day before yesterday, we reported that Russia had one of the power plant uh, systems up online running and it was supposed to be everything was shut down and yet there's a lot of shelling going on and of course if that facility gets hit by Ukraine or Russia either one guess what it's a total nightmare a complete disaster a nuclear meltdown and then on top of that even if it's not that if the power that supplies the unit where it cannot come down offline properly again it would be another meltdown so as russia pulling their troops out of the way because they are planning on creating that no man's land well that could be very true, especially if you look into the idea of a couple of things here. We have uh, Putin who has, uh, let's see here. Putin, if Kiev gets control of rebel-held border with Russia, a uh, 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 Shri Shribanika-type massacre may follow. This is Putin. Of course, he was meeting there. Uh, Normandy for to agree to stabilize eastern Ukraine in Paris uh, communique and they're meeting about 
a, a possible ceasefire. Well, if there's going to be a ceasefire, Russia may be preparing that next step to create that no man's land so that there will be uh, no problem with the West coming across towards Russia ever again, at least not through Ukraine anyway. So that's something that we're kind of watching pretty closely as well. Also here on uh, DonbassToday.ru, uh, reporting retaliatory missile strikes on Ukraine summary for the May 10th, 2023. Unprecedented strikes on Ukraine, the large attack which hit missiles and UAV uh, uh, Garin drones, explosions in Kiev and other cities. Uh, massive strike is uh, some of the latest news coming out of Ukraine there. Uh, they show you the maps here, the fighting and exactly what's going on, what's being done. So I kind of show that for you so you can see that. Also, the head of NATO suddenly announced that all members of the alliance support the entry of Ukraine. So, of course, the question is, is the timing. A uh, statement was made by NATO Secretary Jens Stoltenberg in an interview with the Washington Post. First of all, NATO allies agree that Ukraine will become a member of the alliance. Excuse me, all allies agree that Ukraine has the right to choose its own path, that the decision is made not by Moscow, but by Kiev. And third, all all allies agree that NATO's doors remain open. The question is when this will happen. I cannot tell you about the timing of this. The head of the alliance said, recall that during the, his first visit to Ukraine since the beginning of the full-scale invasion, NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg said that Ukraine's place is in NATO. And that may happen sooner than, than most people think, especially if Russia ends up targeting Germany uh, for sending in tanks and using those uh, those. Uh, uh, armor-piercing rounds that are radioactive, something that Russia said was a red line uh, for them. Uh, one thing I wanted to play here for you as well, though, here, RT News, Terra On Demand. I wanted to see, get you to see a little bit of this clip here that, that RT just aired a few moments ago. Listen in. Georgi Sarnikov, a veteran of KGB foreign intelligence, believes the events of the mid-20th century in their violence and brutality are very similar to what's happening in Ukraine today. All this is the work of the descendants of Ukrainian nationalists who fled to the US and Canada after World War II. It was they who, at the instigation of the CIA, became the heads of various organizations. Те же родственнички, племянники и прочие, приезжавшие до Майдан сюда, э, в город э, Киев и так далее. Те же люди. Мы имеем дело с э, зомбированным э, украинским народом, который сегодня, вот после восьми лет обработки, такой экстраординарной обработки, превратился просто в некую бесноватую, агрессивную, неонацистскую массу. Милости просим в Украине. Добро пожаловать в Украину. French journalist Laura Briard recognizes how similar events in Ukraine are with Operation Aerodynamic. Like 80 years ago, nationalists terrorized pro-Russian Ukrainian residents. By the way, what you're seeing and what you're going to see on your screen now, I can confirm from a report we already did here from someone we know inside Ukraine as well. The journalist is shocked by the stories of people who went through the SBU's secret prisons. The protagonist of one of his recent reports was another victim of the Ukrainian military, a woman named Larissa. Он был избит до такой степени, что у него вообще он весь был черный, полностью лицо, у него были сломаны обувки, у него, ну это уже потом выяснилось, были сломаны несколько лет, его били бесконечно. 
обливали водой и снова пили. Он терял сознание, его снова пили, приводили в чувство, давали отдохнуть и снова пили. Then they arrested Larissa simply because she had brought humanitarian aid to Donbass. Today, the reason for arrest and murder can simply be that you subscribe to Russian news or chat with family members on the other side of the front line. The this is what I'm is talking about right there. After and torture, many prisoners disappear forever. This is what I was talking about right there. Just for simply chatting, if your phone, when they come and they go to, this is Ukrainian military, when they come to your apartment and they look at your phone, if you have any evidence that you've called people on the other side, Russian, fam, even if there's family members, doesn't matter, it's considered a treasonous act. And they confiscate you, take you out, question you, and there's no telling what may happen to you at that point. Uh, if you are Russian Orthodox, you are targeted. No freedom of religion. It's a shame what's happening in this uh, in Ukraine, especially from the Ukrainian side. And I don't say the Russian side is perfect either, but no war is perfect. No loss of life is good. It's tragedy, period. Real quick, also, Mark Lee, I want to play you, uh, excuse me, uh, not Mark Lee, but uh, Mark, uh, Mark Lamb, for, he's uh, also running for Senate. I want to play this real quick clip for you here and share with you one other thing here on Twitter that I think you'll find interesting. Listen in. Hey, folks, Sheriff Lamb here. So truth is becoming harder and harder to find, especially from our politicians and the media. So I wanted to give you some truth today, a little truth bomb. Um, Joe Biden recently announced he's sending 1,500 troops to the border. While I applaud him sending that, I want the American people to understand that this is not to protect our border, to keep people from coming into this country illegally. Those 1,500 soldiers will there be there to process people into this country a lot faster so that you, the American people, don't realize what a disaster this border crisis is. And that is the truth. If you want more truth, make sure you come follow me at SheriffLamForSenate.com and make sure you support us today. God bless and stay safe. Now to kind of uh, back up what he's saying there, I also saw this tweet today. Uh, this is uh, by Natalie uh, Denise there, and she's from, uh, she's a source in Tyler, Texas. And these are, this is at an airport, no license plates on these minivans or anything, but just... Tons of these uh, passenger minivans have been delivered to Texas there. And uh, you cannot help but believe that what they're there for is going to be to transport in uh, masses, but in small numbers in these vans. Because they can hold up to around 12, 14 people in these vans. And then they could transport them all over the different places of the United States uh, and, and embed them all throughout the country practically unnoticed. So when Sheriff Lamb makes that comment that the, um, that the uh, Biden is sending 1,500 troops down to the uh, border there to help process these people through quicker, they're also, looks like, possibly even preparing the transportation for exactly that. This also this video here was shared on there at another location there in Texas. Uh, again, a lot of these vans just parked, being staged, ready to go. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Have a good evening.